All right, 5.4 is just graphing rational functions. What we're going to do is we're going to find the domain. From the domain, if anything is excluded, we're going to find the vertical asymptotes. We're going to simplify the, the rational function itself to make sure we can't make it simpler. Find horizontal or vertical asymptotes. Find the x-intercept and the y-intercept so we can graph it. And then look at Desmos to make sure we graphed it correctly. So we're just applying everything that we learned from all of this unit, but mostly from 5.3. Good. Uh, finding x and y-intercepts added to 5.3, I guess I should say, to create graphs of rational functions. Also, um, as we're doing this, make sure you're comfortable with when the graph of, they're all r today. So when the graph of r of x is below the x-axis or negative, and when it is above the x-axis and like what the intervals are for that, because they may ask you that on Desmos. Mm. I get those two words confused, those two websites on my math lab. <laughs> so we are starting with, again, hmm. I don't know where my original paper was, below. Oh, it's over here. So I'm not going to do x to the fourth. It's not going to come up. We're going to do this one, one, two, three, four of them, and then you will be done. <laughs> So the first one is r of x equals x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 9, okay? The order we're going to do things is we're going to make sure or decide whether or not we can factor them, decide what is excluded from the domain, simplify it, and then find the vertical asymptotes, the multiplicity of the vertical asymptotes, but I should slow down. So let's factor this if we can, okay? We have x minus one. I don't think that's factorable, right? But x squared minus nine, x squared is a perfect square and nine is a perfect square. So you have, if you have a perfect square being subtracted from another perfect square, you can call this a difference of two squares and you can immediately say, you can use the rule a squared minus b squared becomes or is equal to a plus b quantity multiplied by a minus b, right? So that's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. We call it the difference of because they're always being subtracted. So it's not a negative b. It's just b and it's being subtracted, okay? So in this case, a squared is x squared, so we know that a is x. b squared is a positive 9, so we know that b is 3 because 3 squared is 9, right? So x squared minus 9, and I know this is might be unnecessary, x squared nine, minus 9 becomes x plus 3 times x minus 3. If you FOIL that out, you get back to x squared minus 9 because three times x uh, cancels out the negative three times x. Good? So again, this becomes x minus one over x plus three times x minus three. That's the factored form. That's the standard form, okay? When you're talking about domain and you're talking about vertical asymptotes, it's nice to be in factored form. So find the domain. I don't know why I'm writing in all capital letters. The domain is x such that x cannot be something. What is it? Here we have x plus 3. And remember, you can set them each equal to 0. x plus 3 is 0, and x minus 3 is 0. If either of these are true, our denominator becomes zero, right? And that's a problem. So in this case, x is negative three. In this case, x is a positive three. In either of those cases, our, our uh, denominator would be zero. So our domain must say that x cannot be negative three and x cannot be three. From your domain, you get your vertical asymptote, right? So. If it is excluded from the domain, it is also a vertical asymptote. You have a vertical, vertical asymptote at 
x is negative 3 and a vertical asymptote at x is 3. All right, look at, remember, the multiplicity of both of those vertical asymptotes. The multiplicity is the number that it's being, um, if there was an exponent, what the exponent would be. So the multiplicity of this asymptote, that is okay. Um, I'm recording it. You can watch it later. Thank you for telling me. So the multiplicity of this one, right, is one. The multiplicity, and also uh, if you're having internet issues, it's good to let me know because sometimes they're my internet issues. And so if more than one person tells me, I can try to fix it or uh, I guess cancel class if nobody can understand me. Um, this multiplicity is one because this is not being raised to any exponent except one. And this multiplicity is also one because this was not being raised to a second or third power or fourth power or fifth power, good? So both of these vertical asymptotes have an, we call it odd multiplicity. Remember that an odd multiplicity or an even multiplicity determines what direction it's gonna go. So it's omitted from the domain the graph cannot exist at x equals negative three or at x equals three. An odd multi, so that means we're gonna have a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote means the graph approaches negative three, but never touches it, okay? These are even, these are examples of even multiplicities. And then here is one example of an odd multiplicity. And here's another example of an odd multiplicity. So those are the different multiplicities. We know vertical asymptote means you're never going to touch that number, but are you approaching it with from the same direction because it's even, or are you approaching it from different directions on the X, on the Y axis, depending on the um, multiplicity, okay? So this is an odd multiplicity. So it's either going to be going up and then down on the other side or going down on the left and up on the right, okay? So we know the domain, what is excluded from the domain. We know the vertical asymptote. We know what the graph is doing at that vertical asymptote, okay? Now we want to find the horizontal asymptote. So that was A, factor. B, find the domain. Uh, C, find the vertical asymptote. D, find its multiplicity. E, <laughs> find the horizontal or oblique asymptote. If you have a horizontal asymptote, you will not have an oblique asymptote. If you have an oblique asymptote, you will not have a horizontal asymptote. That's why we put them together. Okay, remember to find the horizontal asymptote. We are looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator, right? So if you're looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator, you want to look at the standard form, not the, um, you wanna look at the standard form, not the factored form of your function. The horizontal or oblique asymptote of, I'm just gonna write it again, x minus one over x squared minus nine. We're talking about the degree Let's write out the rule for a horizontal asymptote. F of x is ax to the power of n over bx to the power of m, for example, right? And then it'll be continuing. But we want to look at x and m and possibly a and b, okay? So in this situation where it was r of x equals this, n was one and m is two, right? That's that guy. That one's an understood one, we say, right? The rules are for a horizontal or oblique asymptote, I can just, ooh, I'll write them right here. Okay, 
if n is less than m, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which is just the x-axis. If they are the same degree, you have a horizontal asymptote at, and then you take the leading term of your numerator and divide it by the leading term of your denominator. Okay, just the coefficient of that term also. Uh, third case, if n is equal to m plus one, exactly one more than m, right? Then you have the hard one, an oblique asymptote at y equals mx plus b because you had to do long division of all of that divided, actually truly divided by all of that, right? And then anything else? If n is greater than m plus one, none. Okay, so those are our rules. <laughs> n is one, m is two. That means n is less than m. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Hor uh, horizontal asymptote at y equals zero or right on the x-axis. Sound good? All right, uh, that was E, find the horizontal or oblique asymptote. F. Maybe to, in order to graph it, let's see if we have any x-intercepts or y-intercepts, okay? So for an x-intercept, what do we do? This is good practice for all of algebra. For an x-intercept, you make y zero in your expression. So we have zero equals x minus one over x squared minus nine. Right? I want to get rid of, oh, sorry, one second. All right, uh, I want to find the value of x, right? It's set equal to zero. I wanna get rid of the fraction. I'm gonna multiply by x squared minus nine. Anything I do to this side, I have to do to this side. So it's zero times x squared minus nine. However, all of that times zero just leaves me with zero. So it's still zero equals x minus one because those are canceled and those multiply together give me zero, keep zero, right? <laughs> I'll add one. And I get x is one. I'm just going to write it that way for clarity's sake. So when, remember, this means when y is zero, x is one. So we write that as the point one, zero. That is where it's going to cross the x-intercept. Good. And the y-intercept, same idea. we make x zero, okay? So we say y equals, because we're finding y, even though it's a f of, or r of x equals. So y equals zero minus one over zero squared minus nine, right? So that becomes negative one over negative nine. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So y is one ninth when x is zero. So here we had x is one, y is zero. Now we have x is zero, y is one ninth. And I used an entire sheet of paper and I still haven't even graphed it. All right, that was all so that we can graph it. Good. So we found the domain, sorry. We found the domain. We found the vertical asymptote. We found a horizontal asymptote right at the x-axis. And we found that the point one zero and zero one point nine will be on the graph. Good. All right. I'm guessing I'm just going to get out another piece of paper to graph it. A lot of paper. All right. Good. What do we know about this graph? We know that there is going to be a 
vertical asymptote at x is negative three and at x is positive three. So I'm just going to put a little dash line there. So I know what I'm approaching and never touching. I will approach and never touch from opposite ends, right? So this is odd, an odd asymptote based on, or an odd multiplicity, right? So that means it's going to be one side's up, the other side's down, or vice versa. Oh, I mean, one side's up, the other side's down. Might be like that, might be the opposite of that. We know that <laughs> we're crossing the y-axis at one ninth, right? Where x is zero, y is one ninth. And where y is zero, x is one. So we're also gonna cross here, okay? Uh, anything else? We know that it should approach, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So it should um, follow these lines, follow the, x-axis as it goes out, as you zoom out on the graph. So what we know is that this is odd. This one's also odd. Good. It has to cross there and it has to approach this forever. So I think it has to go up here and it has to go down here, right? If it goes up here, that means it's going to be coming down there. If it goes down here, that means it has to be approaching going up here, good? All right, I was gonna cross here and approach that, but never touch it. So you've got something, I really should zoom out. I don't know, I'm so committed to not zooming out. So you have something that should look like that, right? But those are the only X and Y intercepts. So this is always, this is not gonna cross again. So that's going to always look like that because they're opposites. One's going down, the other one's going up. That one's going up, the other one's going down, but it's never going to cross the x-axis. Good. And when you put that graph into Desmos, x minus one divided by x squared minus nine, it should look like this. Good. All right. If they asked you to tell you to tell them, if I asked you to tell me where it's below the x-axis, and where it's above the x-axis, or r of x is less than zero, right? We would say it's from negative infinity to negative three, right? Because then it's above. Negative infinity to negative three. At negative three, it's nowhere, right? It doesn't exist. And then also, from one, x equals one to x equals three. It's also above, or sorry, below the x. So it's below the x from forever to right here. And then it's below x from right here to three, because this is x is three, this is x is one, and this is x is negative three. Good. If they ask you where it's above the y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis, right? It's going to be above from, but not including negative three, because it doesn't exist on negative three, to one, right? And then also from negative, or so from positive three forever. So if they happen to ask you where it's above the x-axis and where it's below the x-axis, just make sure you know um, that it's never, right? It's never above or below on a vertical asymptote because it doesn't exist on the vertical asymptote. And so you just want to describe it up until, up until the vertical asymptote, what is it doing? Exclude that one. So that's our first one. Then we have X squared minus four divided by X. So first of all, what is our domain? right? Can we factor x squared minus four? Again, it looks like that same rule, x squared minus b squared equals, or sorry, a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So we're going to call this x plus two 
times x minus two, right? Over x, good? So our domain is that x cannot be what? There's nothing on the bottom except x to the first power, right? So x cannot be zero because we don't want our denominator to be zero. Take your denominator, set it equal to zero, solve for that x, and then exclude that. So we're excluding the zero because if it's zero, then you get undefined, right? That means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. It's raised to the first power. So the multiplicity is a multiplicity of one. That's an odd multiplicity. So that means it's doing this or it's doing this, right? Odd multiplicity going in opposite directions. Good. After that, so we found the domain, we found the vertical asymptote. We now want to find the horizontal asymptote or the oblique asymptote. Good. What you want to do for the horizontal or oblique asymptote is in the standard form, take N and take M and analyze them. Okay. So you have f of x equals ax to the power of m over bx to the power of m. What is your n and what is your m? So n, m, right? My n is 2. My m is 1. The opposite of what it was before because for our first example, n was 1, m was 2. Now we have n is 2, m is 1. What does that mean? N is equal to M plus one. That's a hard one. We have an oblique asymptote at Y equals MX plus B. So we have to divide X squared minus four by X. Okay. So we have a horizontal asymptote at Y equals MX plus B. I chose MX plus B uh, just because that's what I'm most familiar with. You can also call it AX plus B. Okay. So what you need to do to solve, to find a linear equation is take x squared minus four and divide it by x. You'll see I left a space between the x squared and the negative four. That's because when you're doing long division of a polynomial by another polynomial, you need to leave space uh, for each exponent value. So we, here's x squared and 0x and a negative 4x to the 0. So this is x to the second, x to the first, x to the 0. You can also just call it x squared over x minus 4 over x. Okay. No problem. Thanks for letting me know. All right. When you're doing long division, it's just like we did long division back in elementary school or whenever that was, right? You look at your first term, look at your first term. X squared divided by X is gonna leave me with X. X times X is X squared, but you need to subtract that X squared. X squared minus X squared, nothing, right? And then you have zero X, zero X goes into X, so that's zero. And then you have negative four. X can't go into negative four, so we can stop. MX plus B is the same as X plus zero. So we have an oblique asymptote at Y equals X. I know that was wild and very quick. Y equals X with a remainder of negative four, technically, but it doesn't really matter. We can stop. It's approximately the line y equals x. And you can imagine that line, right? We've seen that line a lot in algebra. So we have an oblique asymptote at y equals x. <laughs> and now we are finding the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Remember, for the x-intercept, you're just saying y is 0. So we have 0 equals x squared minus 4 over x. I want to get rid of the fraction. 
So I'm going to multiply by x. Multiply that side by x. That's to cancel over here. And here we're 0 times x is still just 0. So you have 0 equals x squared minus 4. Add 4. Add 4. 4 equals x squared. Take the square root. And when you're taking the square root, remember you have to include the positive and the negative answer to that. So the square root of x squared cancels out the x squared. You just get an x equals the square root of 4 is 2, right? So you have a positive 2 and a negative 2. So you have two x intercepts. When y is 0, x is going to equal negative 2 and positive 2 when y is zero, right? So x-intercept means y was zero, sorry. Uh, so that means we have x is negative two, y is zero, and x is two, y is zero. Those points are negative two, zero, and two, zero, good. Then we'll do the x-intercept. Uh, we just did the x-intercept. Then we do the y-intercept, which means x is zero, just to be super specific. <laughs> so we're just going to call, even though it's r of x equals x squared minus four over x, we're going to call it y equals, and instead of x squared, we're going to say zero squared minus four over zero. Good. What happens when you divide anything by zero? It is undefined, so you cannot answer this. This isn't negative four divided by zero, it's just undefined, okay? That means there is no y-intercept, which does make sense because our vertical asymptote is at x equals zero. I think I have enough room to graph this one. Here's our y-intercept. I'm gonna give us what? Positive two and negative two, right? On our x-axis. All right, remember, our vertical asymptote is at x equals zero. That guy. Our vertical asymptote is right here. So it's never gonna touch the y-axis, right? It is a vertical asymptote and it's gonna go up one side, down the other side, right? It's going to cross uh, the x-axis at negative 2 and at positive 2, and it's never going to cross the y-axis, good? Do, <laughs> do we know anything else except that it should go up one side and down the other? That's all we know. However, we don't know if it should look like that or it should look like this. Right? So it could be that this side's going up, or it could be that this side's going down. If this side's going up, that side's going down. If this side's going down, that side's going up. If you don't know, ooh, we also know that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals x. If you think about what y equals x is, y equals x is every time you go up one, you go over one, right? So it should approach this line as it goes out. So we're just using that as a reference. So it's either going to go, it's either, <laughs> sorry, it's either going to go down like that and up like that, or it's going to go down like that, up like that. Huh. Oh, I think that tells us. That tells us, right? That tells us it has to go like this and like this. All right. That's enough information. Cool. Easy. So if you don't know, though, what you can do is you can say, pick a random x value, put in your y, and find a point, right? So if I want to know when x is 3, is it up here or is it down here? I can put in x is three here, put it into x squared minus four over x and see what my y is. 
and decide whether it should go here or here, right? But I know it needs to follow that line. So really the only option is it can never touch here and it has to follow that. So my only option is it looks like that. Sorry, so ugly. It looks like that. The other one looks the same, right? So that one can never touch here and it'll never touch there. So it's just doing this or it might touch there, but it's going to follow that one out forever. And it's going to never touch here. Good. But if you don't know, you can make a table of values. If X was three, Y would be two thirds, I think. And so that would be the point three, two thirds. Good. All right. Moving on to example three, we have 2x squared minus 2x over x squared plus x minus 6. Uh, we want to, let's start with factoring it. Yeah. 2x squared minus 2x, you can factor out a 2x. 2x squared minus 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x just leaves me with an x. Negative 2x divided by 2x just leaves me with a negative 1. Good. X squared plus X minus six. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can kind of just like play around with it. You want it to multiply to a negative six and add to one, right? Multiply to a negative six. So that's going to be three and two, right? But it needs to add to a positive one. So it's going to be a positive three, negative two. Good. So that's the factored form. What is my domain? What is excluded from my domain if those are my factor pairs? X cannot be, right? X can't be negative three and X can't be a positive two or else that would make the entire denominator zero, right? That means we have a vertical asymptote at X is negative three, multiplicity of one odd, so that's going in opposite directions. We also have another, we also have another, we have another vertical asymptote at X is two, a multiplicity also of one. So that's also odd. So that's also going to be going like that. Good. Next, horizontal asymptote or oblique asymptote. Good. Where is... We want to look at M and we want to look at N, right? And what we're working with is F of X equals A X N <laughs> over B X M, right? So is M smaller than M? Is N equal to M? Or is N equal to M plus one? Or is N greater than M plus one? Here we have N is two, M is two. Again, you wanna look at your standard form. This is the um, leading term and it's raised to the second power. This leading term is also raised to the second power. So that means N is equal to M. So our horizontal asymptote is at the um, at the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. And again, we're looking at this one, right? So the leading coefficient is two of the numerator, and the leading coefficient of is one of the denominator. So two over one is two. So we have a horizontal asymptote at two. Right? Because we are looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator, and they are the same. Good. That means, oh, sorry, at y equals two. The number two is not helpful at all. It has to be y equals two. So the line 
y equals 2. Good. Let's see if we can find any x or y intercepts. Your x intercept means your y is set equal to 0. So this is 0 equals 2x squared minus 2x over x squared plus x minus 6, right? And you're welcome to use the factored form. You can use the factored form if you want. So uh, to get rid of the fraction, we're going to multiply all of this by the denominator x squared plus x minus 6. But if we learn anything, that just means it's all being multiplied by 0. And so you get to keep 0 equals 2x squared minus 2x, right? I can factor that. And I can say 0 is 2x times x minus 1. So 0 equals 2x and 0 equals x minus 1. So I have two different answers. Here x is 0 and here x is 1. Any questions about how I got those? So my two, <coughs> sorry, my two x intercepts are 0, 0 and 1, 0. Good. Now, y intercepts means I'm making x zero. So we're going to call it y equals two times zero squared minus two times zero over zero squared plus zero minus six. So that becomes zero over negative six, which is zero. Good. So my y intercept is zero, zero, just like one of my x-intercepts was zero, zero. Good. All right, let's, I think that's enough information. Let's graph it. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative three and one at two. They're both going to be going in opposite directions, but we're not sure which opposite. We also know we're gonna cross the x-axis at zero, zero, cross the y-axis at zero, zero, and cross the x-axis again at, excuse me, one, zero. Good. That is all we know. We also know we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. That's important. So here's y equals two. Here's x equals one. And here's x and y equals zero, right? So our horizontal asymptote is that it should approach y equals two as it goes out infinitely in both directions. Okay, that means it's going to be going either up or down here, either up or down here. It's never, it's going to uh, exit at y equals two. So it can cross this, it'll never cross these, but it can cross this, but it'll um, follow it, good? So here's another example of, if you're not sure, you can just um, plug in some numbers when x is, when x is negative four, maybe? When x is right here. What is y gonna be doing, right? What is r of x gonna be doing? And then that'll give you your point, negative four something, right? So when x is negative four, that means I can put negative four into this. I'm gonna get, 6.6 .6 continuing, okay, just to save time. <laughs> so when I have a neg when I'm at negative four, <laughs> my y is going to be a positive six, so it's going to be way up here. That's enough information to know that it's going to be going up here, down here. Good. 
it's going to be going, if it goes up on this side, it's going to be going down on this side. That means it's going to have to cross here, but cross again here and start going down again. If it's going down on this side, it's going to have to go up on this side, but be approaching y equals two on this side. And you can again type this into Desmos. Make sure you're right. Good. <laughs> Where is it above? Where is it above the x-axis and where is it below the x-axis? Let's talk about that real quick. It is above x at, right? So it's above x at negative infinity to negative three, right? Between zero and one, it comes up. And then again, after two, right? This is X is two. This is X is negative three. So from two to infinity, it's above the X axis. Where is it below? It's below X at negative three to zero. and between one and two only. Sorry, you couldn't see the graph and what I was writing at the same time. All right, last one, number four. We have two X squared minus five X minus three. What that factors to is, well, what are the factors of 2x squared? It's going to be 2x times x, right? And then negative 3 is going to be 1 and 3. So 2 times a negative 3 is going to give me a negative 6. And then x times a positive 1 is going to give me a negative 5x. So I'm going to say x times the positive 1, and then the 2x times the negative 3 is going to give me the negative 5x. Good. Here, this one we've seen before, so that one is just x plus 3 times x minus 3, right? And you can factor that last pair out, so that just becomes 2x minus, sorry, plus 1 over x plus 3, because those have factored themselves out. Good. Your domain x such that x cannot be negative three, right? And x cannot be three, but that's not a vertical asymptote, good? Your only vertical asymptote is at x is negative three. It has a multiplicity of one, so it's odd. So it's gonna be doing this or something similar, good? Horizontal or oblique asymptote, again, you want to look at n is 2, m is 2, right? Uh, if they are equal, then that means you're going to take this number, sorry, you can't see it, this number and divide it by this number, so that's still 2 over 1, so it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals <coughs> the leading coefficient of the top divided by the leading coefficient of the bottom, two divided by one is two. y equals two, good. My x-intercept is when y is zero, right? Zero equals two x plus one. You're welcome to use the factored form, x plus three. That becomes zero equals 2x plus 1, subtract the 1, right? 2x equals negative 1, divide by 2, divide by 2. x is a negative 1 half when y is 0, right? And then my y, I know I'm rushing, my y intercept is when 
x is 0. So we're going to say y is 2 times 0 plus 1 over 1 plus, oops, sorry, 0 plus 3, 1 third, right? So my y-intercept is at 0, positive, 1 third. Good. All right, let's see if I can graph this in four minutes. Good. Okay, our vertical asymptotes at negative three. So it's never going to touch that. And it's going to go opposite directions. And it's going to be moving out at y equals two again. Moving out forever here at y equals two. And it's going to cross at, sorry, negative one half, zero, and at zero, one third. <coughs> that means it's going to be going down over there, approaching two over here. And then here, if it's approaching two, it has to be way up here. So it's doing something up there zero because they're in opposite directions one's up one's down 